some of New Zealand's fastest power boats. Hi, I'm Mike. Ever wonder why black sand is black? Well, kick it with me to find out why and what we use it for. Don't forget to check out our website for prizes and watch us 24-7 right here. With Sam. Malo, I'm Corinne. Today I meet one of New Zealand's leading sculptors, Virginia King. Sammy, get out here! I'm Sam, and today I visit the STI clinic. Oh, and uh, R&B sensation Jay Williams is here at the folly. What's up with him? Uh, he went to the Jay Williams fan club party last night, and I think he got lucky. Oh, <laughs> oh. Sam, you still coming to power boats with me? No. Oh, whatever then. Sports. They're called the Formula One equivalent of the boat racing world. They're fast, they're furious, and very wet. We're here in the beautiful Gulf Harbour to find out about power boat racing. Everyone, meet Greg Brink. He is the Sport 60 champion in the New Zealand Offshore Powerboat Racing Championship. Greg, what makes a powerboat unique? Well, these boats are designed to go on offshore conditions. We have an eight-round championship right around the North Island, and uh, generally we have every sort of condition possible out there, right from flat, calm water to pretty extreme, you know, four or five metre swells. So it's, it, it's pretty, pretty challenging. So what happens in a race? Well, we all start together, so around 35 boats, all on the line, they drop the flag, and it's just everyone, you know, all go. We have a circuit which consists of around between seven to 10 miles, depending on actually what race we, we do. In our class, 60 mile, we'll be doing around eight laps. So can you tell us about your boat? Well, our boat's a Force F-19X out of Australia. It's the only one of its kind in New Zealand. In the flat water, with this boat will do close to 90 mile an hour. And of course, when it's rough like it's going to be today, we'll be doing sort of speeds of around 75 to 80. So part of powerboat racing is all these different classes that are involved. Can you tell us about that? We run all together in the 60 mile championship and there's five different classes in that. Three sport classes including Formula Honda and then what we call the classic class which is the old big offshore boats. So what defines the different classes that you have? Just generally uh, engine, uh, boat type and size. And so coming across from motorsports, would you say you're a bit of a petrol head at heart? Uh, yep, <laughs> I'd have to say that, yeah. No, I think it's it's in, it's in just in red in me and uh, I've been very fortunate to have won championships in motorcycles and, and cars and boats now, so um, it's quite a nice feeling to be able to go out and do it in all, all sports. So you talk about yourself and Eldon, your co-driver. Mm -hmm. As the driver, what do you have to do? For me, my sole focus is concentrating on, on reading the water and maximising the, the speed of the boat. My co-driver, is uh, he adjusts the ballast. What does the ballast mean? We've got a ballast tank right up in the front and it allows us to put up to 180 litres of water, which essentially keeps the boat in the water rather than flying out in, into the air. Um, so that helps because it's a very light boat and we're running you know, nearly 300 horsepower on the back, so the boat wants to fly. And he was also calling the course, so he's telling me where I need to go uh, for the marks and also he's telling me what the other boats are doing around me. So co-driver's absolutely um, crucial role uh, in the boat. Do you think you can take me for a ride in your boat? Yeah, sure, you ready to go? <laughs> as ready as I can be. <laughs> Let's <right>. go. <laughs> showing us about the incredible wet and wild world of powerboat racing. If you guys want to know more, check out this website. We'll see you guys back at the house. And I'm already wet, so I'm going to go for a swim. See ya! Sam, what's up with the closed door? Leave me alone! Hey guys, Mike, here's the sand you wanted. Oh, sweet. Um, what's up with Sam? Oh, I don't know. But right now, we're off to the west coast to find out how the steel mill turns this into the raw material needed to make this. <laughs> oh, I've got crap! Ever wondered why black sand is so hot in summer and where it all comes from? Today we're at the Waikato Northhead mine site to find out what's unique about New Zealand iron sand and how it's prepared to be turned into steel. 
Everyone, this is our man Jamie, who's a mine planner here. Where does all this iron sand come from? The iron sand that we're mining today was uh, originated from the Taranaki Volcanics over a million years ago. It was washed up the west coast of New Zealand and deposited here at Waikato North Head. And how much have you got available here? Uh, we mine four million tonnes a year, and we've got over 100 years' worth of resource. Why is it black? That's due to the iron content. And the black stuff, the blacker the better for us. Well, can you take us through your process? Yep, no worries. First, you'll need some safety gear. All right, brother. Sweet. Let's go. Let's go. And this is where the process all begins. So, Jamie, what is that massive machine and what's it doing? So that machine behind you, that's a bucket wheel excavator. That's actually taking the iron sand out of the face behind you, uh, dropping it onto a conveyor, onto the belt wagon machine behind there, and then the product leaves this area down to the processing plant. How much sand does it dig through? Uh, we can mine 3,000 tonnes per hour. 3,000 tonnes per hour? If this is where you dig it, can you show us where you load it onto the conveyor belt? Yeah, no problem. Let's go, mate. Sweet. It drops off the bucket wheel excavator onto what we call the belt wagon. So back up through there, comes onto there. Onto there. Then it all goes up. Yep, up onto the discharge boom. And once it's all sieved, then it's on the conveyor belt and off. Down the trunk conveyor to the plant, where we concentrate the iron and remove everything that we don't want. The sand has now travelled two kilometres to get here to the plant. So, Jamie, what's off the water? Well, we've got a lot of water mixed with the raw sand anyway as it comes off the conveyors. And then we had water in the plant just as a medium of transporting the, the product around the plant. What are the main things that happen inside the plant? Well, the, the conveyor behind us here is taking the feed up to the trommels. From there, the material goes into the plant and goes through magnetic separators. So they pick up the magnetics that we want and leave the non-magnetics to drop out through to the tailings. And they go back up into the mine to reform the landscape. The material then runs through a sequence of, of cones and spirals. So the idea there is that we're separating the, the dense, heavy, metallic minerals. From the light ones. From the light. So you're all the time refining just to draw out the best iron from the sand. That's it. We're trying to concentrate the amount of iron in the product and get rid of everything that's non-magnetic that we can't make iron out of. So this is it. This is the final product. That's it, Mike. Concentrated iron sand. How long has it taken to come from the raw material all the way to this? Oh, not long. From mining, if we've not got a lot on the raw sand stockpile, we're straight through the plant and down below is in hours. Yeah. And once you've got it into this form, what's going to happen to it? What we'll do now is we'll take it back into the plant, slurry it, and pump it to Glenbrook, where they make iron and steel out of it. How important is steel to, like, the New Zealand economy? Our New Zealand steel represents around about 1% of the New Zealand GDP. So pretty damn important. Yep. You got <laughs> it, mate. Thank you very much, Jamie. No worries. It's been a pleasure. Sweet. And all the people at the Waikato North Head Mine Site for showing us how they turn a raw material into a product ready to be made into iron and steel. If you guys want to know more, do check out the website below, and I'll see you back at the file. See you later. Um, what do you want? Like, tell Sam the Jay Williams fan party was fun and stuff, but I don't want to freak him out, but can you give him this? Oh. Okay, after the break, I meet sculptor Virginia King, R&B sensation Jay Williams is in the fella, and we're following Sam to the STI clinic. Guys, I know what's wrong with Sam.